I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to demonstrate how to make these easy oven mitts. I'll even show you how to make them custom fit for any size that you want. I've used fall fabric, but you can use any fabric that you like. Now let's take a closer look at them. I've chosen to put a decorative band up here at the top. You can make it with or without this decorative band. You can make the entire oven mitt all out of the same piece of fabric. I also chose a different color up here at the band and it also has an optional loop for hanging. Now if you have a computerized sewing machine, you probably have the option to do lettering. And so you could put things up there like thankful, fall harvest, gobble gobble, or maybe even all of them. Or if you find fabrics that already say gobble gobble on there, you could also do that too. You will need the following supplies. As far as your fabric goes, whatever fabric you want on the outside of the oven mitt, you will need one half yard. Lining for the inside, also one half yard. Your optional border fabric, you'll need about one eighth of a yard. The binding strip that goes up around the top and the little loops, you'll need about an eighth of a yard. Your cotton batting, it comes in a variety of packaging. You can buy it off of the great big giant roll bolts or you can find it also in smaller packages. Just make sure that this piece that you get is at least 18 by 42. Also, Inselbright, same thing. You can get it off the roll and sometimes you can find it in packages. It also must have at least 18 inches by 42 inches. If you're going to do the border at the top of the oven mitt, cut it 3 and a half inches by 42 inches. Cut your binding strip 2 and a half inches by 42 and loops, you'll need two loops, and cut them two inches wide by four inches. When you're cutting the border strip and the binding strip and the loops, I'm gonna show you how I recommend you lay your fabric out. When you purchase your fabric, the selvage edges are together on one side. And here's your folded edge. Then you have raw edges here and here. Leave it folded like this cut this edge straight, then move your ruler over three and a half inches to cut your border strip. If you're using the same fabric for the binding, then move it over two and a half inches for the binding strip, and then whatever you have left over, you can use for your little loops. This is my husband, Manny. He is the cook in the family. I don't know how to cook, but I do know how to microwave a little bit. I'm not really allowed in the kitchen. But I'm going to show you how to make a custom fit oven mitt, and I'm going to make them for Manny. Now you can draw this pattern onto paper, but it works out best if you draw, draw it onto thin cardstock or cardboard. And you want to draw much larger than the hand itself because some of it is used for seam allowance and you also need a little bit of wiggle room. So you're just gonna trace out around the hand all the way around. Then decide how long you want it. Do you want it just at the wrist or do you want it to come way up to the arm? Because I'm making this for one particular person, I wrote his name up there so I wouldn't get it confused with someone else. If you want to make one oven mitt, then this is the number of pieces you need to cut out. If you're making a pair, two of them, then this is what you would need to cut out. So the fabric that goes on the outside, you're going to cut two or four. The lining, cut two or four. Cotton batting, same thing. Insel bright, same thing. If you want the border on it, decide where you want the border to go and then just draw a dash line there so you know that that would be your stitch line. I drew mine about two and three quarters from this line to the edge. 
Here are my selvage edges right along here, and this is the fold line. So this is the fabric for the outside. Unfold it, and then right on this center fold line, you're just going to cut it in half. So that you have two pieces. Do the same thing with your lining fabric. Here is my border fabric. Here are the selvage edges together. Here's the fold. I'm going to unfold it and do the same thing. I'm going to cut it in half. Then on each piece of your outside fabric, take a strip of the border fabric. Remember, this is just an option. If you don't want to do this step, then you can just skip it. Then place it up here at the top and make sure this edge is straight right across here. And stitch this border on one quarter inch seam. After stitching, then press the seam on the back side of the fabric. Then unfold, and whichever fabric is the darkest, you're going to press the seam towards that dark fabric. Take your lining fabric and put the front side of the fabric, or right side, facing down on the table. So you're looking at the back of your fabric. Then take your cotton batting and your insole bright and place it on top. Take your fabric for the outside, put the back of the fabric or wrong side of the fabric against your insole bright and cotton batting. Make sure all layers of the fabric are smooth. Then scatter pins all over the top because we're going to be doing some quilting stitches. It's important you do some type of quilting stitches to hold all of the fabric layers together. Your oven mitt will last longer, especially if you're going to be washing it a lot. So you can do straight lines of stitching. You can go straight across and then up and down. You can even do it on a diagonal. You could go from corner to corner, turn it, and then go across to the other corner. Many of your computerized sewing machines have the serpentine stitch. So you can do the same type of stitch pattern going straight across and then up and down. And then you can also do it on a diagonal. If you have a walking foot, I highly recommend you use it. This will help prevent the layers of fabric from shifting apart and getting pin tucks in your fabric. You can purchase these from Amazon.com. You can go on sewing machine supply websites or visit your local sewing machine supply store. I'm going to do my quilt stitch pattern on a diagonal and I'm going to use the serpentine stitch. So I've started in this corner where the border strip is. I've also rolled my fabric up so that it doesn't get caught on the edge of my sewing table. And then just go ahead and stitch from one corner to the other. And as you stitch, you can just unroll your fabric and continue. I've just finished my first row going from corner to corner. Now I'm going to move over anywhere from an inch and a half to two inches and do my second row. Okay, I have just finished going all the way across, going in one direction. Now turn your fabric, if you're going to do this on a diagonal, and go to the other corner, and you would continue doing the same thing, stitching all the way across. <laughs> 
This is the actual fabric that I'm going to use in the oven mitt. And so here's my lining fabric. Got my cotton batting and insole bright all in there and all of the quilting stitches are done. Here is my pattern. So I'm going to take that little dash line. Remember where I told you to mark where you would like your border. Line it up on the seam that's attaching the border to the base part of the fabric and just line it up. And I like using these weights that you can get at the hardware store. I don't know what these things are called, but they're very heavy and I love using them. So then what you would do is you would literally draw around your pattern with a dark marker, especially if you've got really dark fabric like this is. And you just trace it, go way up in there in this part here, and continue tracing all the way around the pattern till you come up here to the top. Now this next step is very, very important. Otherwise things are not going to match up. Flip the pattern. This is real important. And make sure that that line is also lined up there on that. And that you've got plenty of room. And then place your weights on top. because it's kind of hard to pin cardboard. And then you would go ahead and trace around this pattern also. After you've traced around your pattern, then you would just go ahead and begin cutting on your drawn lines. Now you need to bind your raw edges so they don't unravel when they're being used or washed. If you have a computerized machine, you probably have something that looks like this or this one. If you don't have an overlock stitch, then use your zigzag stitch. And it will tell you up here what presser foot to use. But because my fabric layers are so thick, I'm going to use my walking foot to do this stitch. So align your fabric up with whatever presser foot you are using and go ahead and bind all of these edges. done, this is what your edges should look like. Now I'm going to make the loops so that you can hang your oven mitt up if you choose to. Here's the front side of the fabric. Remember this is a 2 inch by 4 inch piece of fabric and you'll need to cut two of these out. So fold it in half and you're going to do this step at your ironing board. Fold it in half and press it. Then unfold it like this and now bring your raw edges into that center fold line like this and press again. Then fold it in half and press one more time. And remember you're making two of these. Then at your sewing machine stitch the edges together right along there and remember, you should have two when you're done. Bring both sections of the oven mitt front sides together and make sure you match up that little seam that has your border stitched on. And I'm using these Wonder Clips because this is so thick, it would be very hard to try to pin this. So I recommend you use these clips. Then take your loop fabric piece and fold it in half like that. Then you're going to take the folded edge and insert it into the side. And I'm putting it down about an inch and a half from the top. And line it up with your raw edges here. 
along here. Then go ahead and go to your sewing machine and stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around the other mid, except for the top edge. So now I'm going to stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around except for the top edge. I'm going to back stitch a little bit and then continue stitching. Note that when you stitch down in between the thumb and the finger area that you go way down in there and then after you've stitched go ahead and clip as close to that pointed area down there and it'll take you a while to get this to, cl uh, to go down there because this is very very thick. It'll just make it much easier when you go to turn it front side out. After you've clipped in the middle there, then go ahead and begin turning your oven mitt front side out. Take your binding strip, and it's the one that is two and a half inches wide by 42 inches. Fold it in half, and then press it the full length of the strip, and you're doing this at your ironing board. Then take it and fold it in half going the other way and then cut it in half. Take your binding strip and you're going to place it on the inside of the oven mitt. Here's the raw edge of the binding strip and you're going to place it against the raw edge of the oven mitt. Leave about a half inch hanging past this seam here. Here's my seam. So I'm going to leave about a half inch, maybe a little more. Then start over, oh, about three inches from the end of this strip. And you're going to stitch one quarter inch seam all the way around. And when you come back towards the end, you're going to put a pin about three inches from this side seam here. So now bring your two ends together and you're going to overlap them like this. And you're going to cut a one half inch overlap on this top piece right here. So just cut a half inch. Then open the two ends together, unfold them to where you have the front side up and fold your oven mitt over to where the two ends can come together a little bit easier. So after you got your ends lined up, then stitch one half inch seam along here. Then remove the pins and finger press your seam open as best you can. Once you've got it finger pressed a little bit, then fold it in half again. 
Sorry if this is hard to see on camera, but it's a tiny little space. All right, so now that you've got it folded back in half, finish pinning up along this edge and then stitch it the rest of the way, doing that one quarter inch seam along here. Now pull the binding out and fold it up over the edge and then pin it and do this all the way around. After you've got it pinned, then you want to insert the oven mitt over the arm of your sewing machine and stitch real close to the edge of the binding. done. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to follow me on Instagram at The Sewing Room Channel and make sure you check out my Facebook page. Thanks for watching and happy sewing and right, left. There we go. Right, left, right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl. And this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing.